Hi, Micropuncture here. I've got another question today and today it's about the storage um, of uh, water samples uh, for microscopy. And uh, the question is as, uh, as follows. Um, I enjoy looking at uh, pond water samples. I'm curious on how long it is safe to keep water samples in my bedroom. Um, I keep them uncovered. Sometimes I keep them for five days or, or more. Thank you for the question. And as always, the question is probably not quite as simple to answer as one might expect at the beginning. First of all, why would you be concerned um, about safety of storage of pond water? Now, I assume that uh, you're kind of worried uh, because a few, some time ago, a few weeks ago, I made a video, a kind of warning about the growing of a bacteria in your um, in your apartment, in your house, in your place where you live. Because a bacteria, when you uh, when you grow them at high densities, and you do not know which bacteria you grow, there is the possibility for potential health hazard. And I was specifically thinking about so-called um, hay infusions, which um, have been quite popular or are sometimes still popular, where you take some dried grass and, and you mix it with water and then you essentially allow it to rot and then you have a very high bacterial concentration something I do not recommend I guess uh, in this context uh, there is also kind of the concern well how safe is it now uh, to keep uh, pond water um, at home because are there not also microorganisms in there well of course there are because that's the reason why we keep them because we want to put them under the microscope but the situation I think is quite different I would say as a simplified answer it is safe um, as long as it does not start uh, to decompose and to rot and and if it starts to decompose and rot well then um, you, you do not have those uh, ciliates and those microorganisms in there that you want to observe anyway and then you can throw it away. How can we make sure that uh, the pond water that we keep in this jar stays uh, fresh um, as long as possible and there is one thing that you have to make sure you have to make sure that the oxygen concentration in the pond water or in the water sample is uh, sufficiently high and there are two ways how you can do that. Number one you can keep uh, the, the pond water on covered okay simply keep the lid away um, and this uh, will allow of course some um, oxygen to, to diffuse in here and then there will be an oxygen gradient this means that the top uh, uh, part of the water um, will have uh, more oxygen than the bottom and sometimes what you can see if this is the case is that then um, the microorganisms start to accumulate at the, um, at the top okay and sometimes there's even a layer of, of microorganisms at the very top okay and this is uh, the reason why they do that is because they want to reach the oxygen okay and the second way how you can increase uh, the um, the oxygen concentration is to make sure that there's some green stuff, some green water plants, some algae, like in this case, uh, in there, because they do photosynthesis and this um, creates oxygen. And you can actually see there are bubbles in here as well. These are oxygen bubbles, so the oxygen concentration is uh, is made high by um, the water plants. Um, in this case, it's also okay to put okay, a lid on top like this um, because uh, you the, the plants make uh, or the algae they make uh, they make the oxygen. Okay, I put the lid on top here so that I kind of minimize evaporation a little bit but um, I don't always make sure, tighten it up completely um, and I open it every day to allow some exchange of air okay because carbon dioxide uh, for photosynthesis is also necessary okay but why do you even want to have a high oxygen concentration in there the reason is is because ciliates um, and other small organisms maybe little worms and, and, and whatever um, what they need is, is they need a lot of oxygen and they will eat uh, bacteria and other smaller microorganisms that have found so they will actually keep the bacterial concentration low um, if you do not have enough oxygen um, or if there are too many nutrients in there for example if you add food like I don't know some starch uh, starch grains uh, from potatoes or wheat or some milk small drops of milk it's called a milk culture if you overdo that uh, then what will happen is, is uh, that um, the bacteria will start to grow very rapidly and uh, they have a very short generation time they grow very rapidly and this uh, causes uh, the oxygen level to drop and uh, this uh, then also causes the higher the slightly higher organisms like the ciliates and so on to die and then uh, basically you do not have those organisms that eat the bacteria anymore and then this causes a bacterial explosion and the whole thing starts to decompose and rot okay and you have to throw it Way. I also do not recommend to put it into direct sunlight. It's not not good either, um, because uh, this uh, causes also an, an, uh, a heating um, of the of the water, and uh, this also drives out the oxygen. So what you want is you keep it in a bright place, but not in direct sunlight. Bright place because of photosynthesis, of course. If you do that, uh, then um, it's not a it's not a problem. It will uh, store and uh, for for quite a long time. Um, and uh, if water evaporates, you have to replenish the water a little bit. 
do not do the following don't wait until too much water has um, has um, evaporated and then do not add too much water but always add a little bit of water because um, the change in um, in in osmotic balance uh, because the water that you add has different um, concentration of minerals and different uh, other impurities in it and this causes a shock to the microorganism so always kind of replenish it um, little by little because this uh, way the microorganisms they don't get a, a too radical change in water quality essentially what you're doing is you're trying to keep a mini aquarium so to say um, and now what about completely closing the lid off okay um, and if you do that uh, then, then you have you're creating something that we call a mesocosm um, where essentially um, all of the nutrients are completely recycled in there um, and this is somewhat unstable okay um, not um, even aquariums with a larger uh, water uh, volume not even them you can get totally stable even there you have to exchange the water um, so um, I would uh, say is this uh, keep it open um, or at least put the lid on it, on it lightly replenish the water make sure oxygen concentration is high and in a jar like this uh, with time the number and composition of microorganisms will change there's no question about this it has to change because of course this is not in pond okay the temperature in your home is different the light conditions are different and so on um, and uh, nutrients are different because they're being used up and uh, others are released maybe so um, of course you will see a change of um, uh, of microorganisms also in a, a jar like this I don't know maybe there are certain larvae that start to hatch and then you have again um, different organisms in there so um, it is not going to be stable I mean that's clear we don't expect it to be um, and uh, if you manage to completely stabilize it and completely at the same time being completely Completely closed off. You have managed something that's very difficult. Another thing I just want to show you here: what I've got here is, is a very small uh, dish. And there are I don't know, maybe half a milliliter of, of uh, pond water is in here, and I keep um, little worms in here. Okay, uh, that once that I extract it, and I've kept this here all over a week now. And uh, I always add every day. I add a small drop of water. I put a, a little lid on top. It happens to be a polarizing filter, <laughs> but that is a lid to reduce water evaporation. And these worms have been now in here with a little bit of algae as food uh, for uh, for uh, I don't know over a week now and this also works okay and they're quite happy um, one thing that I do not definitely do not do I do not uh, look at um, sewage water because that is a health issue um, but uh, clear pond water from a pond where actually thousands of people go swimming and I have less, less of a problem of course I also understand that the water quality is not the same everywhere we're in the pond um, and of course I also understand that certain microorganisms can um, yeah ampli multiply in, in the jar and others not and you don't know what happens exactly which ones multiply but generally um, I would say that uh, because the pond is known not to have any parasites human parasites uh, that there are certain little parasites that can attack uh, the skin and so on this pond is not known for that um, so for this reason I consider it uh, quite safe even if stored for a long time but ultimately you never know what you're growing so always uh, be reasonably use your common sense and be reasonably safe and, and uh, if you see that there's some strange change uh, to the pond water and um, it starts to smell foul or bad or maybe the plants start to die also happened to me once um, then you simply uh, throw it away and yeah you wash out the glass and, and you go out and you collect a new sample of pond water okay I think I think that's enough uh, for me to say today I wish you all the best happy microbe hunting as always and uh, bye bye see you again next time